We have a, a display here, and uh, for RC model boat racing, they, they use a starting clock to start uh, each race. And then uh, the other thing that they uh, want to keep track of is the heat number. So right now we're showing heat number on here. We're heat number three. And, and each time we run through a cycle, we, the heat number automatically increments to the next heat number. So right now I'm going to show you the keypad. Right here we have a keypad. It's got run, pause, preset one and preset two. Okay, most of the time uh, you're going to have these presets set to predetermined value. Now I want to tap preset one. It's set for two minutes and 30 seconds, and that's a common time used. Uh, so when the boats are getting ready to race, we set this timer to 200 two minutes and 30 seconds, and then the, the racers get started, their boat's out on the lake, and uh, we hit the run button, and it starts counting down. Now when the timer gets to zero, that means they need to be at the starting line. And it's going to continue to count down as it goes to zero. And if you want to pause it for some reason, you can do that. Uh, we'll continue with the run. And it will continue to count down. And when it gets to zero, uh, then they should be starting. Now, I want to show you one more thing here. I want to pause it. I have a second preset, and we set that one to 30 seconds. And sometimes you want a 30 second uh, preset time. And then uh, we will press the run button, and it will start counting down. And you'll notice it's counting down to, to a smaller number, eventually get to zero. Now I'm going to go over here and look at the heat number. I can manually change the heat number, uh, or I can uh, let it automatically change. So we're just going to wait for this timer to finish here. And it's counting down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And notice the heat number is now 4. It was 3 earlier, now it's 4, so it auto increments. Now I, I can also manually increment the heat number, or decrement the heat number, or reset it to zero. I can uh, change these preset times. So let's say I don't want 30 seconds, but I want 10 seconds. So I can turn the knob and see until I get 10 seconds. I can press and hold this preset value, the display will flash with dashes, and uh, the preset time is now 10 seconds. So I'm going to go back and press the 2 minute and 30 second preset. Now I'm going to press this preset 2, which is now 10 seconds. Now I'm going to hit the run button, and you notice it'll start counting down from 10 seconds to 0. Now earlier I had reset the preset, uh, the heat number to zero, and so it now is auto incremented to one. So each time I run either one of the presets, it will automatically increment the heat number to the next heat number. Okay. Uh, There again, we're incrementing the heat number manually, decorating it manually, just like before. Uh, the off button makes the display go dark. The on button turns it back on again. So if I want to make the display go dark, I can do so. Okay, uh, now I'll show you a couple other things here. We have an accessory connector on the side here for auxiliary input. If we need so, if we have other options, uh, and some customers have specific options they want to put on there, like triggering a camera when the timer gets to zero. Uh, we have an option, on a, not on this particular unit, but uh, we can add an option to this that will trigger a camera uh, when the timer gets to zero. And so that way they can, they can start the race uh, so what we d normally do is we set it so that uh, the, the camera actually triggers at a pre preset time. And it could be a one or two seconds prior 
to, to zero or one or two seconds after it gets to zero, you have an adjustment range in there. Uh, since this doesn't have the option, I can't show you that feature, but it is built into it, and you have to order it as an additional special option. Now let's let's look at how this is plugged in in the back here. I'm going to turn this over. You'll notice there's a power cord. Now this display is waterproof, uh, so you can if this got jumped into the water, it's not going to damage it. Uh, but you do want to dry it off carefully before uh, using it again if you do dr dr drop it in the lake. And the plug in the power cord is simply here. Now we're using a small DC power supply. I'll show it to you here. But you could hook this to a car battery. So with a different adapter on here, you can plug this straight into a car battery or any other 12 volt gel cell type battery or whatever you have that's a 12 volt source. Uh, you, so it depends on where you are, whether you have a battery. Some people put this out on a platform on a lake or on a barge out in the middle of the lake, and which is perfectly acceptable to do.